Hi everyone, glad to have you back for another Thursday Tips and Tricks. Uh, if you recall last week we were talking about flying geese, we were talking about the fast flying geese construction method and the wing clipper tool, and I was giving you all the construction hints and tips that I share with students in classrooms to help them be more successful with the process. And I'd like to follow up today with some other information about flying geese, and this kind of has to do with color, color placement, and some variations that you can get into that were, are gonna give you some interesting quilt design possibilities. Um, let's start at the beginning with a quick review. Remember the fast flying geese method requires that you use five squares. One that's cut big and four that are cut small. Here's your first hint. If you're working with somebody else's pattern and you're not sure, well, which one, needs, which one ends up where? Um, remember that the large square will produce the large triangles and the small squares will produce the small triangles. So that's gonna help with your first um, thought as you're choosing colors and fabrics for your project. Now here's another thing that generally happens. If you're working and putting flying geese in a row for a border or in a, in a specific type section of your quilt, usually what happens is the large triangle is usually dark and the small squares and small triangles are usually light. And now that's not, that's not a hard fast rule, but generally that's what you see in the, in the instructions. If you happen to be using those flying geese to create a star type design, usually what happens is the reverse. The large square is light in value and the small squares are darker in value to give you that look of a star. Um, and again, that's not always hard and fast, but that's generally what happens. But I want you to think about something here. You do have to use four small squares, but there's no rule, there's no method that says you always have to have the same color for those four small squares. Personally, I love to do scrap quilts and I've, uh, I've done them all my life. And let me talk you through how I would do these scrapping. Instead of all the small squares being the same, I chose four different purples for mine. I took the two first squares, positioned them on the small and the large, did my marking and my stitching and my cutting and my pressing, took the next two squares, and I'm not really planning this at all. I was just taking squares and working through the process. But when I get done with my four flying geese, I end up with combinations. Color one plus color two and one, color two and three, color three and four, and color four and one. And you know, scrap quilts can get really crazy sometimes and you can keep a scrap quilt kind of under control by keeping these two close to each other so they kind of kiss there at the corner or it, you can totally take those and rearrange them to get a really completely scrap look. Uh, then I, I laid the, my Atlantic, no, I'm sorry, I laid my Yankee Pride quilt here. Uh, this one has literally hundreds of flying geese in it. And I chose, you know, pink and browns and tans for my color scheme, but this one has, I think, four different pinks in that block. And this one I think has three different pinks to create that star. This really allows you to get that old fashioned scrappy look with a really efficient method in your projects. So give that a try next time you're making a scrap pull. Now let me move this one out of the way and I'm going to show you another coloring situation that we like to use when you might may in your next project. This is a combination of a large dark square, and then I'm using two medium and two light for my smaller squares. And what happens is when I work through the construction process, I use the two mediums, small squares first, positioned them, marked, stitched, cut, and press. Then I took the light ones, placed those in those corners, worked my way through to the end of the process, and I, and I ended up with two pairs of mirror image flying geese. Now you might look at those and say, why? Why would I ever want to make flying geese that looks like that? Well, we um, are just very shortly launching 
our new block of the month program. And Journeys is the name of the program. And we used those exact pieces to frame out one of the corner, all four, four corner sections in the project. And it really does some interesting things with the design. And you know, for those of you who don't know about it, Journeys will be launching in September. And if you're interested in signing up and getting on board with not only our first original block of the month design, but with fabric that I designed in conjunction with Jason Yenter from In The Beginning Fabrics. Um, this project is being conducted or presented by Deb Luttrell of Stitch in Heaven, but there's an added bonus to this block of the month. I talked my good friend Marie Bostwick into writing a story that would go along with the quilt, and um, that's you're gonna be receiving a chapter of that every month. So you're gonna have great fabric, you're gonna have a pre-cut kit, you're gonna have awesome instructions, and the story, you're, not, you're gonna have a tough time waiting from one month to the next to get to the end of the story. So, but that's an interesting scenario for those flying geese to do them in that manner. Now, let me move this one down and I'm gonna pull up one more. This next organizational process, organizational um, thing that I did for this, went along with my know why Carolina Lily blocks. And the organization was this, large square, light. I chose three small squares that were the color of a flower, a petal color, and one small square that was the color of a leaf. And the process, choose the first two, place, mark, stitch, cut, press, add the next two to go to the next one. What you'll end up with is this scenario here where two of the flying geese have just the petal colors and then two of the flying geese are mirror images of each other uh, so that those two green sections can kiss so that all you have to do then is add a couple of additional squares and a P square in the middle to give you the flower look of the Carolina lily flower and through the magic of television. Ta-da! There's one that looks just awesome. How cool is that? Um, and we have that four block Carolina lily pattern, or that Carolina lily pattern in a one block, a four block, and a five block version. And you can find those on our website. And so I want to encourage you to have some fun and to play with flying geese. If you're doing our love links pattern, you're gonna find that half of the flying geese in here are light with small darks. Half of the flying geese are large dark and lights to give you the chevron looks that are in here. And you know, the nicest thing is that wing clipper tool is gonna to do this size, it's gonna do my journey size, it's gonna do my Carolina lily size, it's gonna do the little stars that are in here, plus about six additional ones. So. Hopefully you're gonna have, this will get some ideas rolling. Hopefully it'll get the, the uh, juices flowing for you to go start playing with some flying geese on your own. And I hope that you share your projects with us by sending us photos and um, telling us what you think. So have a good week, be well, be safe, and I'll see you next Thursday.